I am all about driving people to the next step. If I'm working with you and you're in my FEM mentorship and you're in my RAP program, like I don't need you to go, you know, all the way, get all these things right now. I need you to get to the next step and the next step and the next step. And so I'm trying to influence you so you can get to each of those next steps, right? Same thing when I'm having a sales conversation, same thing when I'm trying to get a lead. I just want to get them to the next step. And sometimes if you're trying to drive people to all these different things, they get confused and a cute, confused mind says and does, right? So we want to make sure they're not confused. Now, what's going to get someone clear and know to take the next step? Beliefs. It's all beliefs. People do everything. Everything that people do is based on their beliefs. Everything, 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 no exception. You walked into this room because of your beliefs. Everything is based on your beliefs, okay? So when we're looking at what, we have to answer this question. What are the beliefs? that they, meaning the prospect, the person you're talking to, what are the beliefs that made, they need to have in order to buy now? Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time, clear. What are the beliefs they need to have in order to buy now? Sometimes I insert act now, because sometimes it's not buying. Buying into the idea, but maybe it's just to opt in, right? I do this with marketing. I'm thinking I'm putting stuff out there and I have to ask the question, okay, whoever my target market is, so in this case, let's say I'm targeting women entrepreneurs, okay, specifically service-based women entrepreneurs, and I have this result to help them, let's just say, close more sales or get more clients in the first meeting, which is one thing I like to uh, talk about in my marketing. And I have to think about, well, what are the beliefs they need to have in order just to click on that first? All right, so I gotta go through those beliefs. And then I know, well, what can I say to them to get them to believe that? Okay, so here are some common beliefs. Same thing if you're having a conversation with someone, a sales conversation. They need to believe that you can get them the result. Isn't that true? If they don't believe you can get them the result, I don't care how irresistible your offer is. I don't care if you end up charging like nothing like the other person, right, in your event planning. If you match that price, if they don't believe you could get them the result, they ain't buying, right? If they don't believe They'll, so they have to believe that they'll miss out, okay? So meaning, there's that thing called FOMO. That's a fun Facebook thing now. Fear of missing out. We all want to belong. It's one of our core things that we have. We all want to belong. And if we have this fear that we're missing out, then we want to be part of something that's gonna drive us to action. And if you don't work with me now and you go, let's say another year, let's say this woman I just mentioned, Jane, the one who's making $800 a month, right? And if she actually believed that there was a way, and I think if she was in this room, she would because of seeing all the femmes and seeing all the results, but if she actually believed that she could go from 800 a month to 8,000 a month by learning a sales system, and that if she didn't, she would miss out on the chance to do that, she might be more likely to buy, right? So these are the things we need to think about of how to get people to that place. Not because we want to manipulate them, because we want to get fear out of the way. All right, so I have a bunch of them here. So they, you ha they have to believe that they can do it. They gotta believe that it's possible. They gotta believe that it's more painful than parting with the money. Okay, it's painful to reach into your pockets. This guy, we went to the seminar, he calls people who won't reach into their pockets kangaroos. Well, I got short hands. And he's like, has a shirt that says no kangaroos. <laughs> it's just really cute. Um, but they gotta believe it's actually more painful than paying, than, than parting with the money. They have to believe that you're an expert in what you do. They gotta believe it's a good deal. Some of you who haven't used this tactic with anchoring, you have a higher price and then you discount it like I talked about earlier this morning, and you're not doing that, you're robbing them of the opportunity to feel like they're getting a good deal. And it's not BS, like it's real. You just have to be convicted in your value and then your price is your price. It's all pulled out of your you know what anyway, so it really doesn't matter but you gotta feel like you have the result. I was talking to someone, um, who was I talking to the other day about, I think, yeah, she was, she was new and like kind of starting money coaching. Uh, oh yeah, she's a CPA. She's a CPA and she wanted to do, like she's basically just selling like financial services as well. You would relate to this. Um, Melanie is also a CPA, financial, selling financial services. But anyway, so she, um, she wants to give financial services away and I started kind of reframing her on the whole idea of like how she has the opportunity to transform, not just give them like a, an investment, like she gets them saving like 50 bucks a month or something like that, but to actually transform the way they feel about money, what they do and their habits and their beliefs. 
And so we went through this whole thing of how she can actually like be charging way more money. And I said, well, look, if you could just, let's start, I had to start with all these beliefs. And I was thinking, if you worked with someone for six months and you were able to like get them to completely transform the way they feel about money, their, their habits, and even get them saving, let's say because they shifted their habits, you get them saving $500 a month. I said, if you charge $5,000, how long would it take them to recoup that? Easy math for you guys. 10, 10, yeah, okay, you got it. 10 months, right? So could you charge someone five, if you believe that you can help them start to save for themselves $500 a month towards their financial goals, could you charge $5,000? If after, even if it took six months before they started to make it, then $500, it would only take 10 months before they recouped it. And then for the rest of their lives, they have this skill. They have this habit. You never can, you don't ever have to take it away from them. And it compounds. So I talked to a lot of the femmes about, because I'm like, yeah, you're making an investment, but this is an investment in you. You're the best investment out there. And then it compounds. So I got her to believe that this is worth $5,000. That's an anchor price, we'll talk about that later, but I'm getting you to understand the idea of like, if I get her to believe it's worth $5,000, which she didn't believe before, but now she gets, because she does believe she can do that and help them shift the habits, then it makes sense for her to say it's a $5,000 program, but you can have it for 2,500. That's an anchor price and that's real, right? Does that make sense? So you gotta justify, you gotta understand how you can say, how you can make it worth it. But my point is getting back to what they need to believe. They have to believe it's a discount. They have to believe it's a, it's a deal or especially the cheap chips out there, they're not gonna buy from you. They want a deal, okay? They want the value. Even, you know, how many of you guys would much rather have, let's just say, um, I don't know, let's just say it was a program, get a $10,000 program for $1,000 versus get a $1,000 program for $1,000. How many of you would like the $10,000 program? Does anyone not want it? James? I want it. You want it, just didn't raise your hand. He's like, I'm too cool to raise my hand. Okay, cool. So everybody knows that, but sometimes they feel like, oh, it's salesy, I don't wanna do that. But you want it, so all we gotta do is get our brains as the person making the offer around the fact that, okay, what is the real value? And even if you don't like, you know, want to say this is a $5,000 program and da, 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 there are ways to do it where we can also compare. We can use comparisons to anchor the value and I'll show you guys that. Okay, they need to believe that you're credible. They need to believe you've helped others get, re others like them get results. And they need to believe that they can't do it without you. Now you might be wondering, okay, now that I know the beliefs, how do I make them believe that? Anyone wondering that? Okay, cool. Yeah, good, good, thank you for raising your hand. Unlike some people. <laughs> okay, the, the easiest way I can tell you is in one word, stories. Stories. It's not about statistics or whatever, it's just about stories.